This is my 1936 Mills Do Re Mi jukebox, and I'm just going to give a quick breakdown on how this works. If you want to play a song, you can either put in a nickel for one play, a dime for two, or a quarter for five plays. If your coin gets stuck, this thing here that looks like a screw is actually the coin reject, and that coin will come out over here. You can either put your money in first, or you can push your buttons first. If you well, let's, let's just first go to the select program. This is your list of songs. And you can pick from that. Now what I was going to say is, if you did not push a button first and, and you just put the money in, what it's going to do is it's going to play the next song after the last song that was played, which in this case we would say was number one. So you put a quarter in, it will play two, three, four, five, and six. Now if you wanted to play something, just say you wanted to play number three, you would push number three down. Then if you put a coin in, it will start at number three. If you had a quarter, for example, play number three, then we'll play four, five, six, and seven. Now if you had number three pushed and you had number eight pushed, then we'll play number three, and number eight, and then we'll play nine, ten, eleven. Now if you push three, eight, and then six, it's not going to play three, eight, and six. It's going to play three, six, eight, then nine, and ten. That's all with a quarter, of course. Um, the neat thing is this knob is going to rotate so you always know what record is playing or what was your last record playing. And if you don't like the selections, you just pull up on this and that resets them. I want to give a brief uh, breakdown of the turntable side of this. Over here you have your motor for your speed. This is going to, uh, basically it's going to spin, let's see, this piece here this little rubber ring that's going to go onto your turntable. It's going to make it make it rotate. If it's going too fast or too slow, you have this control right here, and that can uh, either slow it up or speed it up. And let's see what else we got in here. Don't really need to know that. Um, here's here's a, a, basically a weight to take tension off the tone armor if it's too heavy or if it's skipping you can make it a little heavier that's easily adjusted and there's your cartridge to change a needle you just unscrew that and you put the needle in tighten it back up uh, chains have been lubed this is a chain that actually uh, makes this area here spin so you can see what record you're on what else you got here uh, go to the back side this one I never figured out so if anyone figures this out, let me know. It's a little brass weight on a rod. It's some sort of, uh, it's got to be something for balancing. I'm not sure. Okay, starting from the top, you have your volume control. Then you have this little uh, toggle switch. And all this does, so if you see over there, it turns on and off the light that uh, is in the selector area. So you can you know, see the, uh, see the record you want to play if you're in a dark bar or something like that. Uh, in the middle, you got your your coin mechs, your speakers, and over here is is basically um, your controls for when you put your money in. It's going to operate these relays. You have your amplifier over here. You have uh, bass and treble. You have this. I'm not exactly sure what this is. I have seen an image once and I actually copied this on my desktop but it's a giant resistor and what it does is sometimes if you're uh, picking a record the arm will come down and then all of a sudden it'll kick out it will like to try to play and then kick out and uh, if you dial this up a little bit that takes care of that let's see what else do we have here this area here basically I think I believe this area over here is when the record gets to the end, it's going to make a switch, which is right right over here. I don't want to touch it. I got power there. Makes that switch and it will kick the uh, tone arm off. This one here, you can see this piece here. It works with there's like a that's this area right here. It's like a tooth gear and that kind of advances. That's if your your record's doing one of these, it keeps that going. Uh, let's see what else. Get this uh, noise resistor. No, actually, it's like a capacitor. Sorry. Here's your your motor, and what this one does is this is your carousel motor. It moves a 
moves the carousels around till you get to whatever selection you want. And then uh, lastly, we have down here, let me get a light on it and can see it better. This is your play stimulator. There's a little clock mechanism down in there. And uh, what it does is, um, after actually when you play a record, uh, there's a little lever in there that would come up and reset that clock mechanism. And as it does that, uh, it times out. And over here, where this thumb screw, I'll just, just be easier. Where this uh, thumb screw is, you can set it to 15 minutes, uh, 30, 45, an hour for for that amount of interval to play the song. So basically, after the record stops, this thing keeps ticking away. And the whole point was just to uh, play a record, not really to give you a free record. It was, it was more so for you to, you know, sit at the bar and after like 30 minutes, no one's playing anything. All of a sudden, the song kicks out and you know, hey, let's go play some music, you know. So then you pull money out and throw it in. So that's what that was for. That's actually pretty ingenious. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So that was the uh, 1936 Mills Do Re Mi. Oh yeah, I, I, sh I did say I was going to show you this. So okay, just say if you put a coin in, this should give you two credits right here. So just push this down. Try to make that relay. As you can see right here, this is what's ticking. And you see you got time settings, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour. And basically, call it a, what do they call it? They call it a, let me read it, be easier. Just an automatic timer, I guess. But we're gonna call it a play stimulator. Basically, I'm going to show you how the play stimulator works here. You can see uh, inside is a clock mechanism, and you see it counting down. You see this arm right here. It has a little insulator on it, and you see the switches. Um, this arm is constantly moving, and it gets closer and closer to the switches. And it can go anywhere from, I believe, from this area here. You can time it with that nut, little wing nut, uh, or thumb screw. You can uh, go 15 minutes to an hour. I think I have it set like 15 minutes. But anyway, we're going to speed up the process a little. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this piece here, and that's going to bring that down. It's going to kick it in. Now, once it starts, you'll see uh, there's a piece. You don't see it here, but it's going to come around and it's going to reset this. And it's going to bring this back up for the uh, timer. You'll see it's just going to keep going around, and every time you get a revolution with with uh, with this motor here, it's gonna keep resetting and resetting and resetting until finally it's play. So let me see if I get some light on here so you can see that. All right, so I'm gonna just fake this out. I'm gonna push this down, and that's gonna kick that in over here. Let's see that piece come up and reset it. Yeah. 